Okay, well, a bit of a lull on the tech side of things, but we are back and with a channel classic, the Razer Blade 17. So we last talked about the Razer Blade 17 during CES month of January, and as mentioned, a lot of things changed from last year's model, which, to put it frankly, I hated. Because, well, it was just too expensive for what it offered. But they have fixed this for this year, by increasing the price of the newer 12th gen Intel models by nearly $600 per configuration, or more if you live outside of the US. Yep, that sounds weird, but in exchange, you are now getting a lot more for the price. However, there is a catch which is something you will find out towards the end of the video. So stick around and don't forget to subscribe. I mean, it's not exactly a long video in the first place, so yeah, enjoy and learn something while you're at it. Anyways, the biggest difference is undoubtedly the GPU wattage which can boost up to 165 watts with dynamic boost if you get the RTX 3080 tie. For the RTX 3070 tie, you get 150 watts and 130 watts for the RTX 3060. So while there is no change for the RTX 3060, there is a 20 watt jump for the RTX 3070 tie and a 35 watt jump for the RTX 3080 tie. Realistically, you're looking at a 20, 20 watt and a 15 watt jump due to dynamic boost requirements. But yeah, this explains the lower 200 USD price increase for the RTX 3060. If you watch Jared's text review, it's very clear that the CPU does have to compromise though. But it does mean gaming is well on another level compared to last year's version. And if you get the now much sought after 1440p screen, I think you would appreciate the higher GPU wattage more. I mean, for a laptop that's less than 1 inch thick, compromises have to be made, even if there are cooling improvements from last year. And a lower CPU wattage does mean better sustainable performance in the long term. So there's that. Anyways, apart from that, the 240Hz QHD displays gets its own share of unique upgrades from last year, with G-Sync and Advanced Optimus. The rest only get a mug switch and, well, finally you have the usual DDR5 RAM upgrade and you can pretty much add up to see why the price increases. But here's where my bit of research comes in that a lot of people don't actually notice, unless you were subscribed to my channel and watched one of my previous videos. So yeah, subscribe so that you don't miss out on things like this. Whether you like it or not, the RTX 3070 tie with the 150W GPU is going to outperform or at least match the 130W RTX 3080 version from last year in almost every scenario except the one that requires more VRAM, which the Razer Blades last year's model did not have. They were RTX 3080 AGB units unless you got the 4K display. So with that said, take a look at this. Last year's Full HD 360Hz Razer Blade 17 with the i7-11800H with the RTX 3080 was worth $3,299. This year, the QHD 240Hz G-Sync and Advanced Optimus enabled Razer Blade 17 with the i7-12800H with the RTX 3070 tie is worth 3199 US dollars. The last year's version did get 32 GB RAM and also outside of the Razer Blade options. The Alienware X17 is probably the closest and it comes at around 200 dollars cheaper but you get a 4K display instead of a QHD while it does also kind of get a slow i7-12700H but compromises. But there's another bigger but here because 4K displays aren't the best option when it comes to gaming and the X17 is thicker and in an entirely different weight class. And when you consider the other 17 inch laptops out there, they won't even come close when it comes to size. So it's not even worth comparing. Now I don't know about you, but in a game of trump cards, this basically puts this specific configuration of the Razer Blade 17 to basically be the best in terms of value you can get compared to any 17 inch laptop out there. Especially when there aren't exactly any 17 inch laptop this thin with such a high TGP and importantly with a QHD screen. I will be happy to be proved wrong. Until then. I would ignore the rest of the configuration in the Blade 17 lineup and pretty much any other 17 inch laptop with 12th gen Intel CPUs for now and get this, if you want a 17 inch laptop with that massive screen real estate and want to actually be able to use it as a laptop instead of a permanent desktop replacement because it's thinner, lighter and easier to carry around. End of story and well if you don't agree with me discuss below and if you agree with me don't forget to subscribe.